Good evening, Theo Trade. This is Coy Rosenblum with your end of August. It's August 30th, 2018. Theo Night video. We'll take a look at the main U.S. equity market indexes, drip down into the sector location, and then finish up with some commodities, mainly gold, crude, also look at VIX volatility, and get a sense of where August has taken us. And as we turn the corner through the holiday into September, basically we're looking where we are and where might we be headed. Starting with the S&P weekly chart. This thing, with the exception of this little end of 2015 period, has consistently made not just higher highs, higher lows, but a relatively low volatility creep or low volatility drift. It's maybe not surprising that the market continues its low volatility creep to new all-time highs. As we jump down to the daily chart, we can see the same thing, except this time we had our low to high, low to high, and this did not fulfill a pullback scenario. So I've been calling this our alternate thesis or stronger than expected bull short squeeze rally without a logical pullback. Nonetheless, here we are at new all-time highs. Yes, overbought. Yes, above our 2018 pivot. And even yes, above our parallel trendline channel. All of that still argues for a pullback against the reality that this market continues to drift higher. So as we turn into September, continue to watch this 2900 level in the S&P futures. Any type of departure back beneath it, that's still the dominant thesis, so it could suggest a move to at least 2850, maybe even to the prior session lows in July, August near 2800. That is a downside path and there are multiple ways to trade the downside path. Simple options, spreads, verticals, or individual stocks. We'll take a look at these and then drill down to what the sectors are telling us, where strength continues, and where weakness is cropping up. That may be some good candidates for a future short sell opportunity. In the Dow, it has not achieved its prior 2018 high. So we would have to say that the Dow mini futures are showing relative weakness. Still above two pivots, 25, eight, and roughly the rising parallel trendline channel, and of course the prior high from March. Yet it's beneath its February and January high. However, we know that tech, technology, XLK sector, Apple, Amazon, to an extent Netflix and other technology names have continued to surge to the upside, especially Amazon crossing above 2000 today, and Apple just turned parabolic. But the NASDAQ is above its 2018 trendline channel. And that's into this 7600 level, just shy of 7700 in the Dow futures. The small cap Russell also making new highs, breaking above our rectangle, and it's pushing up into 1750 and had our recent breakout above 1700. So yes, we state facts and develop our plans and therefore trading tactics from there. This market is uptrending, but it is overbought. It's slightly above resistance and has at least better than average odds of pulling back as opposed to extending higher. Does that mean it has to pull back? Certainly not. We just reference in this case, the Russell May into June for nonstop upside action and the other indexes, not so much that period, but in January. A quick look at our sector grid. This just talks about daily charts of the main nine sector spiders. The bullish ones are the offensive ones, financials, technology, and consumer discretionary. We keep those at the top of this nine sector grid. Financials have lagged the rest of the market. They've been roughly in a sideways trading range between about 2650 and about 2850 for the bulk of 2018. And that's not the case in the other two bullish or offensive groups. That's XLK technology, XLY consumer discretionary, and within that retail. We have seen a lot of strength in a few of our choice retail names recently. In the middle, we have our mid-sector, mid-cycle, neutral sectors, XLI, which is industrials, B is your materials, E is your energy. As you might expect, 
these are relatively at the midpoint, maybe upper midpoint of their 2018 range. Now they, with the exception of energy, are not at that 2018 high. They also were just shy of it with the financials. This could be concerning for the bulls, especially with respect to the strength, really relentless strength in staples, but also healthcare, XLV. And that's why I like doing scans of this. That's why the benefit is to us because we probably don't look at healthcare stocks. We probably don't see Humana and Blue Cross Blue Shield and things like that. But this is why we look at sectors. We look at the broader picture and the XLV, our healthcare sector, is showing the most strength or really the most straight up action from June, July into August. So as we turn the corner again into September, watch what happens next. And maybe for a future video, we can talk about individual XLV or healthcare components. You can also look those up and the components of what's in this XLV sector. XLU tends to be our defensive or risk off grouping. We think of it like bonds and it's at the midpoint. So that's bullish. A little bit of uh, dissected action, strength in the staples, relative strength in the utilities. But I think this paints the broader picture wide and broad strength in retail, consumer discretionary, and technology. These are things that argue for future bullish activity. Remember, markets don't go straight up. They typically pull back. And that forms the foundation of our swing trading logic. Finally, we'll rise above the sectors. Remember, the sectors are nine groups within the stock market to the commodity and what we call intermarket. And that's just bonds, we look at gold and oil as commodity proxies, the S&P futures, which is a stock market, and the dollar, not shown, is the dollar. And look at the comparison between these markets. So these two tend to go together. This is S&P futures and crude oil. These are what we call economically sensitive, or they rise when the economy is good and bullish, and they tend to fall when it's not. This also has a positive correlation. So stocks have been in a relentless uptrend. Crude oil, still uptrending, still rallying, but not at the highs. So crude is a little bit weaker than the S&P, but nonetheless trending to the upside. That's not the case in gold. Gold has had this relentless sell swing from its April peak to its August and July bounce low. Is that the end of the trend? We don't tend to go and predict trend reversals. We just acknowledge where money's flowing and we think that that is going to continue. So this is a little bear flag setup for the bold and aggressive traders in gold. So watch the departure from the 1220 level. The other market is bonds. ZN is a proxy. You can also use ZB or just the ETF TLT or IEF to compare how the bond market, which is typically risk off, conforms to the rest of the indexes. In this case, we are seeing multiple months of flat sideways action between roughly 119 and just above 120 in the index. That shows up as well, again, in our TLT. Bonds are in a trading range. Gold is seeing money flow out. Crude and equities are seeing money flow in. So that's the broader picture with respect to money flow, risk on, risk off. And before we conclude our overview of August into September, we'll take a quick look at the VIX volatility index. With the exception of the February bounce rally, the volatility index with the creeping up equity market has remained relatively muted. Typically do see short-term bounces and that corresponds with pullbacks or retracements in the equity market, albeit short-lived. So there tends to be this magnet of a compression or a gravity point magnet, roughly at 1250 to about 13 in the VIX index. So all these things put together, keep watching your prices. Even if you just trade the equity market, take a look at other sectors. If you like to do swing trades or put those on as a portfolio ad, take a look at strong sectors getting stronger or weak sectors getting weaker. Look at individual components. But keep watching the money flow in gold, back in the crude, and with respect to treasuries, and of course, our good friend, the VIX. Take care. This is Corey Rosenblum for the Theo Knight video for August 30th, 2018.